I've done this so many times and I find maybe because it's I haven't done this for a while but every time I'm gonna start I have like this weird hesitation it's so odd anyway hello everybody welcome to car and talks it's been a long time I have been <laughs> not doing this um, for so many reasons but I do want to get doing it again because uh, it was fun and it was a good way to kind of let my thoughts out into the world um, there's so much to talk about since the last time I've been here that I'm actually not going to talk about all of it um, basically I just have been busy with life stuff I uh, met a nice girl who's like so sweet and kind and and good to be around that I am afraid to like spend to be around her like I'm like oh, am I you know am I good enough for you I don't know <laughs> like that kind of situation uh, so that's been taking up my time um, there's work as always there's being split between two uh, places that I that I reside uh, there's taking care of my animal there's trying to figure out a way to make more money uh, trying to get a better job or trying to make money on the side um, and there's just being kind of overwhelmed and, and finding it hard to start things uh, just in general uh, that I've been dealing with uh, so that's why I've been gone uh, I do want to do this more like I said but I don't know I, I you know I set goals and then I don't meet them <laughs> it seems to be my pattern uh, I don't know why I'm like this but uh, it's what I'm like trying to build discipline in myself has been quite difficult I don't really have routines um, the only habits I have are bad ones so trying to like break out of them and and do better is is kind of difficult for me but I am trying uh, trying to be more healthy and trying to you know eat the right stuff and it's been difficult I don't know why uh, the last uh, big effort I made to do these kinds of things like I did do them um, more successfully and this time I don't know why it's just much harder I, 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 I have my suspicions this these last few years have been kind of tough uh, lost some people in my family a lot of things have changed um, in my life uh, most most of the changes aren't exactly for the better and I don't know I guess there's just a lot of uh, stress and anxiety going on but uh, in order to combat that I'd like to start doing YouTube stuff again um, I wanted for example like I wanted you know to have some gameplay footage to put in the back of this um, just so there is some visual but all the gameplay footage I recorded like had issues with it <laughs> um, I just couldn't figure out you know what was going on um, I did eventually figure it out, but it was too late to in order to do this recording. Uh, I don't know. It's just a lot of lot of stuff. Uh, juggling my like free time and putting effort into things. I don't know. It's just been odd, you know. Like uh, sometimes I'll make a plan to do something productive, and then I just either I just don't, or there's some interruption that stops me it's really odd um, I don't know I don't know how to it seems like I can't just willpower myself through doing this kind of stuff so I'm trying to figure out like what is the solution um, thinking about therapy but I've tried therapy multiple times before and it's you know it's nice half of the times that I went to therapists. I enjoyed talking to the therapist, but I didn't feel like it was helping. Like I feel like I wasn't f fixing anything or, or or improving in any way. And then the other half, I felt like it was 
just a complete waste of time. Like the therapist wasn't. Uh, not only weren't they helping, it well, like wasn't like talking to them wasn't great. So I don't know. I don't know how to fix this uh, kind of situation. Uh, I'd like to. I'd like to really put effort into this YouTube thing because I feel like. Um, I feel like money has become scarce like in the last few years and it feels like you have to like if you are going to have a hobby or if there is something you love that's like a creative thing or if there's something you love that's just like a consuming entertainment which a lot of you know a lot of the stuff I, I like a lot of media is just you just kind of consume it passively uh, I feel like you do have to like find a way these days to make it into a something that makes you money I don't know if I'm ever gonna hit that level but I think I am gonna try because just just enjoying myself by myself which I actually I have been doing uh, you know it's just not feasible with limited time and you know limited amount of money I make Ugh. So pushing for it to be something more than that uh, seems like something I would have to do to continue doing it. Uh, also, because there's so much, you know, like we're in this information age and anything that you enjoy, there's infinite of it. So if I want to spend time doing these things I enjoy more, I have to, you know, figure out a way to make that feasible. And, uh, you know, I don't know, like I said, if I ever will, but... I think I'm gonna try. Um, so I want to get back into doing this uh, my stuff. I do want to do more YouTube videos, like or um, different kinds of things. Uh, I don't know. Like I think a big thing with this with me is I don't want to be on camera. Like I feel weird about that. Uh, not that, like, you know, I don't feel like Quasimodo or anything like that, but I just, the internet can be a, can be a crazy place. You know, you say one thing wrong or out of context, and it can, like, affect you very negatively. Uh, and I, I just kind of, not that I have no filter, but <laughs> I do say what I think, but I don't always say it eloquently, you know? Um. And I don't know, it's just kind of scary putting yourself out there like that for me, anyway. And I don't have the money. I'd love to make like a little VTuber situation rig, uh, but I don't have the money for that. That's way too expensive. So I don't know, I'm trying to figure out how to solve that issue, but I would like to do other things that don't require, to me, yeah, don't require me to be on camera maybe so much, but I could be performing some other activity other than you know, playing video games or just talking in front of a mic. Um, but anyway, that's for me to figure out. Uh, let's talk media that I've consumed since I've been gone. Let's talk watching things, because there's not so much of this, I don't think. At least not so much interesting. Uh, so I saw House of the Dragon. I bit the bullet. Um, Game of Thrones broke my heart the way that that ended. Um, watching that show go from marvelous television to a writing disaster, uh, watching characters that were built up and written so well just kind of become nothing or act like other people at the, at the end of that just really, really like hurt me <laughs> you know? um so i i was kind of burned on game of thrones like i burned on star wars and some other some other stuff i used to love um but i you know i had nothing to do one day and i was i think i had some food i was like all right let me let me check out house of the dragon and i did you know and in my free time or during my dinner times uh, during the last few weeks, I, I would I stayed with it. I watched the whole thing, uh, and it's it's decent. You know, it has the the political 
you know, vying for power that made Game of Thrones interesting. The characters are... They don't quite... They're not quite as interesting as the original series Game of Thrones characters, but they are quite good. You know, they're written well, and they, so far, you know, first season, they so far they make sense what they're doing. Um, the writing style, like, I'd say it's good. I'd say it's a good show. I think one of the problems with it is it's kind of banking on the fact that you think Game of Thrones is good. <laughs> You know, there's a point where they they mention the Song of Ice and Fire as a prophecy that the, the great conqueror Aegon had, right? And agreed, he had a dream, and he saw this vision of the future and, and what it meant for his dynasty and his legacy and all that stuff. But we saw that. We saw the Song of Ice and Fire, and it was a big fart in the pants. So, you know, that setup is kind of like, eh. <laughs> you, know? you know, they're saying like, oh, you know, thousands of years from now, it's going to be so important that you fulfill this legacy. And it's like, well, the legacy is kind of, <laughs> you know, it's not great. Um, I think that really brings it down. I think just steering away from game of the, the best thing for game of thrones stuff to do from now on is to steer away from that first season of uh, game of thrones for me at least i mean i know there's so many people who are just like what are you talking about it's great for me it's 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 not and um you know house of the dragon is is okay like it's good not not it's not amazing it's not you know groundbreaking but it's it's an entertaining watch uh but i wasn't like i didn't have to know what happens next there was no cliffhanger that i was like oh my gosh you know what i mean like there was nothing that pulled me in that much at any point during the show i could have dropped it and been okay with it you know i was just kind of watching it to watch it so i wouldn't say this is a great i don't know if my bitterness from the original series has anything to do with that I, i'd like to think i'm just judging the series as you know by itself um i think another thing about the series that i kind of feel is unrealistic is they're doing that thing where they can't just have a character be good or be evil they have to make them kind of mixed um now, people would say that that's realistic because no person is is all the way good, all the way evil, makes the right choices all the time, makes the bad choices all the time. I, I don't think that's true. I think, like, yes, most people are mixed, but there's also a equal amount of people who have chosen, like, I'm just going to just for me, just for me always. And there's another group of people who's like, I'm going to put other people before me. And they consistently act that way. And, you know, every little thing in between. Being a good person, like, isn't necessarily a weakness. You can be good and be smart and know, like, okay, I can put myself in at risk here. But in this situation, like, I got to get out of here because I'm not going to come out on top. Game of Thrones basically says, like, if you're decent... You're not going to make it. Like, you have to be a little evil. And it's like, well, I get it. <laughs> but not always. Like, you know, there is... There, you know, you can be kind of a good person and also live... You know, just get out of Dodge when things get rough. Or be smart. Um, I don't know. I, I just feel like they're like the writers of the show are just like well we can't have somebody be one dimensional because that's unrealistic but it's like no it's, there are people who are kind of like that uh, in real life um, so I, I just like it's that feeling of like okay I like this character now they're, they're behaving in a way that I'm like okay this is cool 
and then they'll just do something like out of left field where it's like oh yeah see they got a dark side and it's like really <laughs> like, <laughs> really like they they swung that far you know the pendulum swung that far like out of, out of just really and they were cool with it like because it benefited like i don't know um I don't want to get too spoilery, but just like there's that thing with the queen where she allow you know this guy goes ahead and kills people on her behalf, and she's like, oh, I guess, I guess you're an ally to me, right? I didn't want this, but you're, I guess you'll be my friends for my friend for the rest of the show, <laughs> and it's like, you'd think she'd be like, I didn't want them dead. Why don't you get the fuck lost? Like you know, I don't know. I, I, that's just one example. Like, there's, I feel like there's more in the show, but I don't know. It, it, it's just one of those shows where it's like we got to make everybody a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, you know, Breaking Bad, I feel, did the same thing, but it did it more. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like in Game of Thrones there's more chances for people to shine because it's like a medieval kind of everybody's a shit situation. Um, so really, even the smallest thing would, would lift somebody up. Like, you know, the smallest amount of like, I'm going to do the right thing. Um, but they just, I don't know. I mean, this is all, you know, this is like a feel, uh, the, the way I feel about the show, like, where I'm like, eh, it's not, like, I, like, I think, I feel like the, the closest character to trying to do that is the king, and he's pretty well done. I think he's, like, one of the best characters in the, in the show. Not that, like, making you an evil character or making you a selfish character makes you a bad character, but, um... I feel like there's no real standouts in that category either in this show. Um, I think that's... Uh, maybe that's the thing. It's just there's no characters that really like... There's no Joffrey. You know, there's no Ned Stark that really... You can get attached to as one way or the other. You know what I mean? Uh, there's no Tyrion who's kind of the mid-player who's but interesting as well you know um so i don't know i just i think it's good it's quality but it's not it didn't get me excited as the original series did at the beginning and it didn't disappoint me as much as the original series did at the end so it's a decent show um good for a watch and i did and that's what i think uh one of the things I saw, I did not see Barbie and I did not see Oppenheimer so, over the summer. So I have no idea what those movies, uh, what there is to see with those movies. I have zero interest in either one. Um, I don't feel like glorifying a scientist who made an atomic bomb and I don't feel like hearing that the patriarchy is bad over and over again is... Like, these are assumptions, but, you know, I'm not interested in either message, uh, so I skipped those two. I did see Spider-Verse, finally, uh, the second Spider-Verse movie. That movie's really good. Fun watch, quality, the characters are really fun. Ugh. Ugh. Um... One thing I have to say about Spider-Verse is... You know what? Let's get into that later. Spider Verse is a good movie. It's interesting. The story continues from the first movie, and it's the it doesn't have that like a lot of sequels. They kind of rehash the first movie. Um, but it doesn't have that problem. It stays interesting. There's new problems. I feel like the new problems are kind of forced to create tension or to create drama which is all right i guess but it, it just feels like hmm why is why are these problems working this way 
which I guess will be revealed in the third movie, but, like, until they reveal it, like, it's kind of a point of, like, where I'm like, eh, I don't know about this. Or, like, the characters just aren't explaining things to each other, and it creates, like, friction between them. That's frustrating. Um, so, there's that. But uh, there's also, like, the animation, although it's, like, spectacular in most moments. I feel like some moments are kind of, like... Like, you feel like they're trying to impart a certain feeling on you in certain moments. Where, I don't know, sometimes it feels like it's just too much. It's like, I know this scene is sad. You don't have to make everything blue or you know what I mean like the first movie I don't feel like did that that much where like if a character is upset of something like I don't need the whole screen to turn blue for it to be you know for me to realize it's a sad scene likewise like I don't need everything to be bombastic if you want me to be excited like you know um but these are like nitpicks. Like it's it's a pretty decent movie. I don't. I still. I don't think it's as good as the first movie because the first movie has a complete story in one movie. This movie's got a cliffhanger. Um, you know, it helps if you watch the first movie to get to know the characters and everything like that. But it's still a fun watch. I watched it multiple times and enjoyed it. Um, the villain or the villain that they show you in the um, in the trailers, the spot is actually quite like more interesting than he's ever been uh which these movies have a habit of making characters that we've seen before more interesting which i think is really cool um they also have a you know another villain reveal at the end where you're like oh okay this is cool and this kind of takes from the comics um that was really cool uh, I find that Miles in the movie has a lot of plot, arm, plot armor, and I, you know, I know this is probably an argument among nerds, but I do feel that all right. So I'm gonna, I guess I'm going to spoil this movie a little bit. In the middle of the movie, uh, there's a spider society that gathers in one universe in order to protect the multiverse or the spider-verse as it's called in this movie and miles wants to be a part of this group because he wants to have other spider man to talk to and he wants to see his old friends and um basically you know just wants to be part of the bigger team part of the big picture now these spider man are from different universes and they're all you know good guys um and what they're trying to do is they're trying to prevent bigger disasters by allowing small singular like they're letting singular bad events happen because they feel that if they don't it will dislodge or uh create problems in the universe and that will cause a bigger more catastrophic problem um and i can see this you know i get that they're trying to like compare and contrast these two ways of thinking right miles finds out like that you know they their intent is to let something bad happen to him so that his universe the universes or whatever will be safe later on because it's supposed to happen so many problems with this writing first of all they can look between universes why can they look forward in time like that seems odd i like i guess they're looking at universes that are ahead of the time in his universe like it doesn't make any sense that way um because there's they're saying there's going to be a future event that will, you know, harm you. Uh, we have to prevent you from going to that uh, so that we can protect the universes as a whole. And it's like, well, how come you can see forward in time? 
even the spot, which is just like a trans-dimensional being, can see forward in time in order to see this event. And I'm like, why does why is that happening? Is that happening because the plot needs it to happen in order to have drama? You know, like it's like manufactured um, tension because like you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't know that this is going to happen if you're just going between the universes um rick and morty actually makes fun of this you know like with they're like there's no time travel i just went to a dimension where you know this happened beforehand or whatever uh but this show this movie doesn't really explain they're just like oh yeah we well he can see it don't worry about it don't think about it um so that's a big problem you know then so miles is like i don't want to just let this happen because it's like if you knew uncle ben was going to get shot would you have let him get shot it's you know it's not knowing what's going to happen and and fucking up is one thing but like knowing something bad is going to happen and just letting it happen because it's for the greater good is another thing and I feel that out of those thousands of Spider-Men in the Spider-Man home base, there would at least be half that would be like, yeah, he's right. Like, like Miles has like one person who's like on his side right away and a few others who are, you know, kind of join him throughout the movie. But... I feel like if half those Spider-Mans are the Peter Parker that I know from, like, either movies or, or comics or from a lot of Spider-Man media, they would have stood with him right away and been like, no, you can't, you know, there might be an, another issue here at play or we can't just, you know, let something awful happen to somebody because it's for the greater good. Like, I, I feel like Spider-Man was, Spider was never that kind of character. Um, so to have like you know Miguel who's a different Spider-Man uh, Spider-Man 2099 be like be that way is fine but to have all the Peter Parkers or other spider women or men or whatever be like yeah no we gotta do it his way is is odd to me <laughs> and that and that you know thousands of Spider-Man chasing one wouldn't be able to catch him also odd like you know that's the most plot army plot armory plot armor that's ever <laughs> no that's not true but it, it's odd that you know someone online made the argument that like because he has spider sense you know when he's in danger um he can, a spider-man on the defensive is better than a spider-man on the offensive i was like that's nonsense because i don't think spider sense goes off unless something is trying to kill you or hurt you right and they're not trying to kill him. They're just trying to catch him. So I don't think his spider sense would be working. Um, and if it is just like an, an awareness of what's going on around you, they all have it. So they'd be... And they all like know like, okay, his, spider -Man's, his spider sense is going to tell him to do this. I'll catch him by doing this. Like, I just don't feel like that would have worked. Now, if half the spider man were on his side... Or if there was another group that was like, no, you can't do this to him. And they helped him get away after he runs for a little bit. Then I'd be like, all right, yeah. Now the, the Spider-Men are fighting with each other. It's like Civil War, but with all different Spider-Mens. Uh, that would be more like, okay. Um, I guess you could say that their heart just wasn't in it to go you know, catch this, this teenager and restrain him. <laughs> But then they'd be arguing. They'd be like, listen, man, this isn't the way to do it. <laughs> like, I don't know. I mean, it's fine. Like, it. I feel like it is artificial drama to make the movie more exciting. But without it, you don't, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel like in those things that I brought up, there is actually still drama and tension. But, you know, I guess they wanted the movie to be this way. So whatever. Yeah, it's passable. These are these are not. They don't ruin the movie for me. They're just things that bothered me. I was like, I don't know if you could, you know, in the first movie you were learning how to be yourself. 
be a Spider-Man, and now you're taking down thousands of them, like, or evading thousands of them and outsmarting them. Um, I don't know. I just felt that was odd. Uh, it's it by no means does it ruin the movie. It's a fun movie, uh, but I don't know. This is a little, <laughs> a little much. Uh, and the last thing, or the last um, piece of media I'm going to talk about is the Dungeons & Dragons movie, which I might have talked about last time I was here, um, but I can't remember, so here we go. That movie is a lot of fun. It's got, it's got that Joss Whedon Avengers kind of humor infused into the movie situation going on, which I don't like these days because it's kind of obnoxious but I feel for Dungeons and Dragons like the the tabletop game it's kind of fitting because Dungeons and Dragons is a game where you and your friends pretend to be adventurers and joke around and have this silly stupid time and stupid things happen and I feel like in this this movie captures that feeling pretty well and I feel like that style of writing fits this particular situation. And a lot of the jokes actually land pretty well, too. And the characters are likable, you know? Um, having the main character be a bard who just really doesn't do any fighting was an interesting choice, and it works. Like, you know, it's, it's really fun. Uh, well, when... when blah, 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 blah. A well-written, fun movie, and um, the characters are, are a lot of fun, and the story is is pretty engaging. I got my girlfriend to watch it, and she enjoyed it. <laughs> you know, with her short attention span. <laughs> um, yeah, really good movie. If you haven't seen it already, and you're one of the four or five people that listen to me talk, you should go see it. It's it's really cool. Uh, I think it's you don't have to be a big nerd to enjoy it I think anybody can really enjoy the movie it doesn't get into the nerdier side of Dungeons and Dragons it doesn't it's not like heavy fantasy so like you don't have to know all the rules of this world to understand the story and what's going on I, I think it's really well done and handled uh, to get people into Dungeons and Dragons and it's the first Dungeons and Dragons movie there's been I think tons of them animated non-animated very like b-tier movies or lower than that um you know like on the science fiction channel and all this, oh, throughout the years this is definitely the best one most fun uh the world is interesting the, the situations are interesting they have like magic and, and adventure mixed in just really good movie um you know not not my top movie of all time but but um quite quite good I ha I really have no complaints about this movie at all um, <laughs> I guess that makes it better than Spider-Verse <laughs> and, and House of the Dragon if I can't complain uh, but anyway that, that's, that's the, the movies and, and TV shows I've seen uh, there's been more I just can't think of them and <laughs> it's been too long uh, but let's go on to the games this year has been an incredible year for video games. It's almost to their detriment because there's so many games that I want to play and I have no time to play them all. Um, I actually fell off of Zelda um, Tears of the Kingdom. I, I That game is fun to explore, but the problem I have with Tears of the Kingdom is that the most fun thing in the game is put, making vehicles, I think, and contraptions. And at the beginning of the game, they limit you so much that it feels like in order to have fun with that mechanic, you really have to farm this material. And I think a lot of people, when the game first came out, they would just do this glitch to cut that farming down down to a few hours. They've since patched the game, you know, and when I started playing, the, the glitches are all gone. And um, 
so I would have to, in order to engage with this mechanic, I would have to spend lots and lots of time, like, just running around doing boring shit before I could do fun stuff. And I, I actually got pissed off. I was like, I, I'm not having fun, like, I'm having fun exploring, but I want to do things this way with this, this big mechanic that is the backbone of the game. But I don't have the power to ride in a vehicle for more than not even a minute, <laughs> you know, for more than 20 seconds. So it's it takes away from my fun. Um, so I really didn't like that. And I fell off of Zelda because of that. Uh, but there are other games. Um, Street Fighter Six came out this year. I made a video about like what it's like to pick characters in that game. I wanted to make so much more content for Street Fighter 6 and I just like didn't have the time. I'd recorded a bunch of videos, but in order to edit them down and make like put something out, uh, I just couldn't get my shit together in order to do that. Uh, I will still do that, but it's just, you know, striking while the iron is cold. But that game is fantastic. Street Fighter VI is probably one of the best fighting games in a long time. I... Th Street Fighter IV... Uh, I think the Ultra Street Fighter IV or the Super Street Fighter IV is probably my favorite Street Fighter before this. Uh, I missed out on the Street Fighter III, like, train. Um, but I didn't like five so much. But Street Fighter VI, like, it's cool. It does a lot of cool things, looks cool. I didn't think I would like the graphic style, but once I started playing it, I was like, this feels good, looks good, it's pretty, uh, feels fun to fight people. There's a lot of learning, um, like a lot of things in the game to teach you how to play the game. I don't think the world warrior mode or the world, whatever it is, the world tour mode, I don't think that actually teaches you how to play the game at all. Uh, like some people said in their reviews, like, oh, you know, it teaches you how to do moves by doing this mini game, or teaches you spacing by doing this. And teach I don't, I, nothing in there felt like it was making me a better competitive Street Fighter player at all. It's all against the computer. Fighting against the computer will make you a worse fighter against human beings because the computer acts differently. Um, the only thing you can learn from fighting a computer is maybe how to do combos with a certain character. Like if the computer's doing combos that you can't do, you can be like, oh, I can mix this stuff together. Um, that's really it. The rest is just like it kind of reads your, your inputs. So you have to fool it. And you, you have to find what it will fall for. And usually what it will fall for is not what a person would fall for. So... I, I don't think the world tour mode is a great teaching tool. I honestly think it's pretty bad. But building your own fighter, albeit slowly, uh, in that mode and then bring him or her online and fighting against these other amalgam weird fighters is fantastic. That's a lot of fun. Like using like. Making a fighter using all the different moves that from the, all the other fighters is really awesome. Having their size and, and shape matter is awesome. Um, the you know the dual mode where it's not really for rank, it's just for fun. That's awesome. Uh, one change I would like them to make is you can level these characters up, and if you're a higher level, you really dominate the lower levels and I would like there to be an option to just equalize the equalize the health so that like a lower level character with a good mix of moves has a chance against a, a character who just has bigger numbers um, you know they can even give the character with a higher level like a little advantage like maybe their punches do hit like a little bit harder but it's not like significant to the point where you know two throws are going to destroy a lower level character and I just want one mode you know like one let one mode be for the, the let the levels count and let it be ridiculous let another mode be for people who want it more evenly matched 
So it's just like the the move choice and the the player who uh, gets you the win. I, I really think that would be great. Um, yeah, Street Fighter Six is an amazing game. Like I, I'm bitching about it a little bit, but like it really is fantastic. Uh, if you don't like fighting games, it's a great place to start uh, trying your 2D fighting games. Uh, is there anything else? I got up to gold, like two stars with Jury. Um, Ryu in this game, I don't. He doesn't. He's not doing it for me. He's just less cool than he was in in other Street Fighters, I think. Um, which is a shame because I really like Ryu. I like that he represents the player in his quest for to just get better at fighting games. Like you know, uh, I I think that's really cool. Um. I don't think Luke makes a good <laughs> replacement. Uh, even though he's talking the same shit, I really don't think he's a great replacement. Um, but yeah, Ryu just doesn't do it for me in this game. But Jury's, Jury's probably cooler than she's ever been. A lot of the characters are a lot of fun. Um, I didn't like Manon as, as much as I thought I would. Just the, the trying to get in for the grabs I, I didn't think was very fun uh, Ken is a lot of fun right I hate Ken but he can just do everything uh, so I mean it's it looks cool hey, you know he's got some cool moves uh, I think Zangief is actually a lot of fun uh, just I don't know just being able to like I know I didn't like Manon so much but Zangief has more options on like where he can throw you and how he can throw you run it run at you and stuff and grab you that's pretty fun uh, I'm trying to think what else I don't understand Blanca Cammy's awesome in that game I think that's the coolest Cammy has ever been um, I'm trying to think who else stands out Kimberly is great really really fun I definitely want to make more videos uh, showing off these characters and showing me trying to improve with these characters. I kind of regret not recording my jury games. Uh, but that was just for me to have fun. Um, I can't wait to see Akuma. <laughs> I'm really excited about that. Uh, the new DLC character, Aki, looks really, really cool and interesting. Um, only, only Another problem with this game is the prices for the costumes and DLC seem like they're fucking ridiculous. I like I think this game's amazing, but I don't like Capcom putting grubby. You know, it has like that season pass kind of shit where you have to. It's like, all right, well, you got to dedicate yourself to playing this game, or else you're never gonna do this. That I hate, and um, I don't like. You know, when they're asking you for fifteen dollars for a cosmetic. You know, I think it's ridiculous, but. The game itself is, is pretty sick. Uh, yeah, Street Fighter Six, awesome. Go and play it at least once, just to see. Just to see if you feel the call. Uh, another amazing game that came out was Baldur's Gate 3. And I have sunk so much time into Baldur's Gate 3. Just playing one character. I stuck with one, even though I am, I am so compelled to make 30 and try all the different you know, combinations and stuff. It's an, a great game. This is this is an amazing role playing game. Um, I don't I don't know what to say. Like you, you, the customization is really fun. There's no sliders, so you can't do kind of the stuff you can do with Street Fighter. But like, you can make cool characters. There's lots of mods that you can download to get the characters more flashy and more interesting looking. Um, the dialogue options are really cool. Like, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of options. There's a lot of dialogue options. It's so it it's so good that there are points in the game where you can only say like two things, like yes or no. And when you get to those points, you're actually disappointed because you're like, I'm so used to being able to nuance the situation that it's like it hurts to just have to say one or one of two things you know but that you know it's no detriment on the game in my opinion because it gives you so much options in every other situation uh, I do think it's really awesome 
Um, you can play as any... You can pick any of the characters that join your party. You can play as them as your main character, which switches everything around. Uh, pretty like you still this still like the main beats of the story, but you can just play it however you like. Carlac is everybody's darling. You know she's uh, a lot of fun, spunky, kind, high spirited. You can play her as evil. <laughs> you know, you pick her as your main character and play her as an awful person. I think that's interesting. I think that's cool. Um, they have... Alright, one thing. And this might be a little bit spoilery. But they... So they have an origin character where you can just make anybody and it's like a normal Dungeons & Dragons character. And they also have the Dark Urge. Now the Dark Urge is a character who has... Violent impulses. And... Basically, they're going to want to murder people out of nowhere for uh, at certain points in the game. Now, I thought that I would have to be rolling dice and trying to resist this uh, throughout my playthrough, because I'm playing as a good character but ha that has these horrible impulses. Uh, but there's really... There's one moment where the game actually... You, you murder somebody and it's beyond your, your control... But every other moment, like, you can just pick an option and not do it, and it it doesn't feel like you're fighting bad impulses. It feels like you're just choosing whether to listen to them or not. And I, I was actually disappointed with that. I kind of wanted to be horrified at my own actions uh, more than just the one time. I don't know if it, like, I'm in Act 2 right now, the beginning, I think, of Act 2. And I don't know if there's more later on of this happening. But so far, like, it hasn't... Like, like there's one or two things that it's done, but uh, not as much as I would have enjoyed. Um, I... I don't know. I, I, I would have liked there to be some mechanic to resisting the, the compulsion. Like, you have to fight it somehow. Or you have to find ways to raise your willpower to resist. Uh, so it's not as interesting as I hoped it would be. Uh, but still, the game is a lot of fun, and I'm enjoying playing this character. I was thinking of, you know, my second character being like, alright, well, what if you just do everything? Then what happens? Um, and just playing, like, an evil character. Uh, so we'll see how that goes, but the game is splendiferous. There's so many combinations of classes you can make. I'm sure people will mod the game to add even more to it, which has already happened. Um, there, uh, I, I don't know. It's just great. There's so many classes. Each class has a subclass, and you can mix and match, and it's really it's an amazing role-playing game. Emphasis on the role-playing. Like, emphasis on your options, emphasis on the strategy, emphasis on, you know, thinking about every action you make. Uh, I like that it's doing so well because it really shows that, like, this type of game can be amazing. You know, there's no reason, for example, for the creators of Final Fantasy VII to say, like, you know, turn-based is not interesting or cool anymore and to take all the, the choices out of your character's mouth, except when you want to dress up the girls in a pretty dress. You know what I mean? Like, there's there's no reason to skip out on the role-playing part of RPGs, you know? And just keep the numbers in for whatever fucking reason, and just take away the choices. Even if they don't have a big consequence on the events, like, if I want to play Cloud Strife as an asshole, I should be able to do that. If I want to play him as a ladies' man who flirts with all the girls, I should be able to do that. If I want to play him as gay, <laughs> I should be able to do that. Um, just the, the the choices in this game are just... In Baldur's Gate are just awesome. And I hope that other RPGs will take note and really do something special uh, with what this game has shown them they can do. Um, one other thing, though, that has come to my attention... Uh, one gripe uh, with Baldur's Gate is all the characters are very horny. <laughs> 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 you 
Now, you might say, Karn, why is that a problem? <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. With people, we typically have... How do I word this? So in life, you have people who are straight. Like there's, there, there's a myriad of things, right? There's straight, bisexual, there's gay. There's, um, what's the one where you're not, you, uh, <laughs> asexual, all that stuff. There's uh, all, trans and all that stuff, right? But typically a person is one of those things, one of those, that big ch choice, that big, uh, range of choices. They're usually one of those things. Um... But Baldur's Gate, anyone is anything at any time. Like, <laughs> I think the reason they do it is because the main characters, you can choose to play as them. So if you are a lesbian playing a girl character, you want to be able to, you know, have a romance option with the other girl characters. So I get it. You know, the guys, same thing. So I get why anyone is attracted to anything in this game. But it feels a little odd that when I'm not playing those characters, like, and I have my own character, that they're just attract. They're all attracted to me, no matter what. You know, all the guys are want to sleep with me. All the girls want to sleep with. Me. It's like everybody's horny, and I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> like, <laughs> I didn't do much. I think there was a bug in the game when I started playing it to make the characters sleep with you a little bit faster than than they would normally, but. That's not the problem. The problem is is that everybody is, you know, even if it even if it every game like it checked like if there was a dice roll in the background to see the characters' sexual pre preferences in every game and in every game they had different preferences, that would be so it would be more interesting than just everybody's open to everything no matter what. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of racism in the game. Um, not actual racism, but, like, you know, gameplay. Like, uh, you're this race. Uh, you know, you're the evil elves. Well, I don't trust you. That kind of stuff. Um, so it would be interesting if... if You kind of had to deal with the... Preferences of, you know, the characters that way. So, like, say, let's say you make a dwarf and, and you know, the girl you're chasing after doesn't like short guys, so she's not into you. But if you make, you know what I mean? Like, something like that. It would be, it would give more flavor to the characters and make them feel more real than just they'll sleep with anyone, anywhere, anytime kind of thing. Again, I get why they did this. It's so you can romance whoever you want, uh... In your playthrough, you can, um, you know, if, if you're playing one of the, those characters, you can romance whoever you want them to romance. Like, I get it, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't feel real. Uh, it's not bad, it's just like a weird thing. And for me, it was odd because it's like, like I'm just being nice to people and they're like, do you want to? Fuck! <laughs> I'm like, whoa! <laughs> I'm like, this is not how this works in real life. <laughs> you know, like, I haven't really done anything romantic with you, and you're like, and they're like, super horny, on, like, coming on to me, like, this is very odd. <laughs> uh, but it, uh, that aside, you know, that, that little gripe aside, it's a really fun game. Uh, and I suggest everybody plays Baldur's Gate 3. Even if you don't like RPGs, this might be an RPG that gets you into it. Um, the gameplay has to do with a lot of strategy, positioning, and thinking, and using what you can to solve the problems. Um, so it might turn some people off, but it, it's fan if you like that kind of thing, if you like treating every encounter as... Um, you know, like a chess game or a problem to solve, it's a great game for that. And there are a lot of situations where you can talk your way out of things. 
Um, it's not the kind of game where you can talk your way out of everything. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons is... You know, there are meant to be... You're meant to fight monsters and dragons and stuff like that. So you do have a lot of combat encounters, but um, there are a lot of options to get you out of things peacefully or, or vanish or run away or whatever. Uh, good game. I'll probably talk more about it in the future when I beat it. Um, so yeah, so that's Baldur's Gate 3. Another amazing game, Armored Core 6. <laughs> All these games came out within like a month of each other. And I just don't have the time, but Armored Core 6 is amazing. I've missed the Armored Core series so much. I actually went on, I think it was eBay, and bought some of the older games, and I wanted to do like a mech week. Uh, but, uh, you know, this came out, and I was like, I don't need, I can just play this. <laughs> uh, they fixed all the gripes I had with movement. You know, boosting around on the ground doesn't really cost your energy, which I think is great, so you can kind of move in that fun uh, sliding around on the ground way. Um, the leg parts make, I think, more differences in this game than they have in other games. Um, the weapons are more different. Uh, I have some gripes with the weapons, like, energy weapons in the old game didn't used to cost you money because they didn't use an ammunition. They would, you know, generate energy and use that. But in this game, they cost you money, which I think is dumb. Um... There's also a stagger mechanic, which I am completely sick of in video games. I uh, it, it was so annoying in Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, th there's tons of games with this mechanic. I can't think of every single one, but like... Monster, Hun Monster Hunter has it, but I, I think it makes sense in Monster Hunter. Uh, Dragon's Dogma had it, but even that kind of makes sense. But there are other games where like, unless you stagger the enemy... Like, they just ignore your attacks. And in Armored Core, I feel like... I don't... You know, they're giant robots, and I'm sure they have equilibrium and stuff like that, and they would topple over pretty easily, but... I don't know. I, I just don't think there should be a stagger mechanic in a robot game. It would make more sense if it was, like, a damage thing, where, like, if you damage the arm or whatever, it doesn't... It can't shoot you anymore. But even in that, like, you know, it would happen to ha it would have to happen to your mech as well, and it would suck to lose your arm, and then have to finish the rest of the mission without an arm. So I get I get where they wanted to do some sort of like damage, like you trying to avoid too much burst damage and trying to get burst damage on the enemy. But I feel like you have to build your mechs around that mechanic. Like, you need something that staggers, and then you need something to capitalize. And I kind of hate that. You know? Like, some weapons don't stagger things as much, and blah, blah, blah. And, I don't know. I just... It doesn't feel as cool uh, as just damaging the thing and destroying it outright. So... I don't know. That's the one gripe I have, but everything else is amazing. You can customize your mech in so many great ways. It's cool. Um, so many cool, fun weapons to use. Uh, a lot of weapons are not upgrades; they're side grades, and that's that's actually a little disappointing. Because as you go through the game, it's like you don't feel too much more powerful. Like you feel like you've you grasp the game more, uh, but you don't feel like you know, oh, this this new sword I got is, is changing everything. It's just like, how am I using it? Which some people would say is, is cool, but for me, it's like... When you're building a thing, when, when the strategy is in building the thing, it's like, I want some stuff to just be awesome, but maybe heavy, so I have to, like, deal with that or something like that. I don't know. It, the balance, it, like, it's, it's, it's a very... It's a great game. But I don't know, some stuff just doesn't feel as cool as it did in the older games. Like, in the older games, you would find a weapon and be, like, awesome. And you'd be like, oh, shit, I'm gonna use this. <laughs> like, uh, in this game, it's like, you find a new weapon, you're like, alright, maybe I can make it work, you know? That kind of thing. But still, great game. Uh, I still haven't beat it. I beat Baltaeus. This game did not filter me out. The, <laughs> it's a freaking hard boss, but I did it. Um... 
I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I've recorded a lot of my playthrough of Armored Core, so I'm gonna get that up on YouTube at one point or another. Uh, but yeah, amazing game. Um, still, there's so much more. Like, uh, I haven't played uh, Sea of Stars yet. Uh, I have been playing these little sort of games on, on my phone. Um, Brawl Stars was a, 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 a little game that my girlfriend has been um, introduced to me. Uh, some of the kids at her job were playing it, and then she downloaded it, and she kind of played it. I'm like, this kid, and she made me do it. Or well, she didn't make me do it. I did it so I could play with her. Um, so that we can have something we enjoy playing together, and it's really fun. It's a simple game. It's a top-down, like, competitive shooter with tons of different characters, and it's a lot of fun. It's a very simple, fun game for your phone. It's the first phone game that's specifically for the phone that I actually enjoy. Um, I've also been playing Hearthstone again. I don't know why. Uh, it's a card game made by Blizzard. Uh, so basically made by Satan. <laughs> uh, and I don't know why I'm trying to jump back into it. I'm just completely overwhelmed by like what the other cards can do and what people have that have been playing this game consistently. Uh, but every once in a while you win and you're like... Yeah, like, <laughs> fuck you. Uh, every time you beat a priest, it's amazing. Uh, because they're so annoying. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been playing those just to kill time. It, mostly on my, like, trips to and from work, I'll play uh, Brawl Stars and Hearthstone. Uh, Hollow Cure uh, came out officially. I, I don't even think it's, like, 1.0. I think it's still, like, 0. 0.6. But Hollow Cure came out on Steam, and it it's an amazing game. I definitely wanted to take a better look at it once it, I, I know it's like the official finished version. Uh, I might post a video here or two uh, about that game, but that game is really great. Vampire Survivors has been updating. I haven't played it, but it's, it's, they've been adding a bunch of new stuff. That seems really cool. Resident Evil 4 uh, came out with Separate Ways. I want to check that out. Um, Dead by Daylight has added The Alien, which I tried playing didn't really like <laughs> didn't really like it but it looks amazing uh the animation and the look of the alien is fantastic the gameplay doesn't really do it for me but uh it's, i'd still like to get back into dead by daylight a little bit uh i feel like they're balancing that game for the top players in the game and i feel like that kind of makes things a little rough um At least for Killer. For Survivor, when I play Survivor, I always feel like if I fucked up... I, I, I feel like if I lose, it's because I fucked up. But when I play Killer, I feel like it always feels like it's out of my hand. Even though I'm worse as Survivor and I lose more, I always feel like I could have done better. But as Killer, I'm always like, well, what can I fucking have done? <laughs> like, uh, which I'm sure is not the case. Like, I'm sure I'm screwing up because I'm not particularly good at that game. But just the balance of it kind of annoys me. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 came out. Uh, I played that a little bit. I, I don't like Mortal Kombat games. I haven't liked them since 9. And even 9, like, I had my gripes with it. Um, but they fixed Reptile. They took my favorite character and made him interesting again. So I was like, I gotta... I gotta try it, I guess. <laughs> uh, so I did. And I am. And, uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not... Street Fighter 6 is so much better than Mortal Kombat 1. But... Reptile can do some cool stuff. I don't like the way the combos feel stiff in Mortal Kombat. I don't like the way things work. I'm not good, you know, I'm not a, a crazy uh, good player by any means, but I just, the feel of it doesn't work for me. But Reptile can do an alligator death roll, and that is cool. So, <laughs> so I'm playing that. Um,. Missed so many games this year that I thought were going to be great, and, and probably are, but I just haven't seen them. Ghost Trick, uh, I played that game back when it came out on the 2DS or 3DS or whatever. I think it was just the DS. That game's amazing. Uh, Final Fantasy 16. I haven't... I've touched the demo slightly, um, but I really want to check that out. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush looks amazing. Haven't touched that. 
Starfield actually seems like it might be a good game, which I was totally betting that it wasn't going to be. Um, but there's just so much I have to look at and get to, and I don't know if I ever will. Um, there's also Final Fantasy VII Rebirth news coming out. Um, this is... I'm so weird about this game, where I like... Yeah, stuff looks cool, but the shark was already jumped. Uh, I... To me, Final Fantasy VII is, like, what makes it good is a lot of it is the story. And I just... I The story was ruined for me to a point where it can't really be fixed. And I, you know, I see these videos of the game and I'm like, that looks cool. But... <laughs> My heart is already broken. I think I'm going to have to play it. I think it's like my destiny to <laughs> see what happens with this game. But, um... I don't know. I'm not looking forward to it, actually. I, I, I don't know what to make of that game. I, my feelings are so all over the place. Um... So that's... I think that's everything uh, that I have to talk about today. Uh... This would be a lot longer if I actually talked about everything I did, but I don't want to do that. I just want to get back into the swing of things, uh, which I hope that this does. I do have another video I'm working on that I hope I can get out soon, and I hope I can do this more consistently. Uh, so if you've listened to me rant about all this weird stuff, I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to the end. That's really sweet. Um, I'm hoping to do more and to do more entertaining things in the future. Uh, let's see what happens. But until then, my name is Carnivore, and this is Carn Talks, and thanks for listening to me. Take care, and bye-bye.